Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in. It's time for car shopping questions and answers. I am going to be on camera shortly, but come on in. We'll give you guys uh, some time to get in. We're live on four platforms, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok. You guys, uh, was that, to get in. Was that four? Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok, yes. Uh, I'll be coming on in about 30 seconds. So um, come on in and let's get ready. Get your car questions ready. If this is your first time hopping on with us, I'll be on camera shortly. Um, my name is Deshaun, the auto advisor. And what I focus on is showing you guys the strategies that I learned from being inside the auto industry for uh, really from 2006 to 2014, uh, 2020 rather, 14 years. And now what we do is we focus on teaching you guys what you need to do to save all the money on cars that you should be saving. So as you come in, if you are car shopping either now or you will be over the next 12 months, I want you to type me in the comments. If you're car shopping right now or you're like Deshaun, I'm not right now, but I will be soon, then I want you to type me in the comments and um, we're going to talk to you now. If you're not car shopping for, um, until after that, you will certainly get value from staying on the stream. You'll hear a lot of things. And here's what I always say. Someone's going to ask the same question that you have. So come on in. I'm just getting TikTok up and running. Um, let's get Instagram and we'll you guys can start posting your questions. But make sure you invite somebody first. If you really want to continue to help us grow and continue to help us get this message out, invite somebody over. If this is your first time on a live stream with us, type a um, type a one. And we're going to get to a lot of questions in about 20 seconds. Let me just get Instagram up and uh, you guys can start typing your questions. But I always say, if your friends find out you've been using this stuff and saving all this money and you didn't tell them about it, friendship could be in jeopardy and i don't want to i'm here to help you i'm not here to break up friendships so make sure you invite somebody that you care about all right we got instagram up welcome welcome we'll give them a chance to get in and uh you can start typing your questions everybody we'll be taking questions from all four platforms instagram youtube TikTok, and facebook so let me get this in How's the audio? Can I get it clear on all platforms? How's the audio? Audio's clear? Can everybody hear me good? All right, if you don't know, if you missed the intro, like I said, my name is Deshaun, the auto advisor. I was in the car business with Mercedes-Benz General Motors uh, from 2006 to 2020. And now what I do is I teach you guys the strategies you need to stop negotiating and start making people bid for your business. You're gonna save a lot more money you're going to save it easier when you stop negotiating and start making people bid for your business. All right. This whole broadcast is sponsored by my new digital book. It's called Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. So if you hate car shopping, type, that's me. Um, and it's called Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealerships. As part of our launch, it's 75% off for 30 minutes. So if you go to my TikTok bio, it's normally $97. You can get your book. So everything we'll be talking about during this next hour, we'll be answering lots of questions. Start typing them. All of the answers are coming out of my book. So if you want everything I teach in one spot, get your 75% off in my TikTok bio, in my Instagram bio. And I'll put the link here for you guys on YouTube and on Facebook so that you can get it. And uh, let's get going. Start typing your questions, y'all. And once you visit that site, the timer starts. You got 30 minutes. Want you so if you visited it and came back, that timer's still running. If it goes back to if it goes to zero, price of the book goes to $97. So I want you all to have an opportunity to get my new book for um, $24. And you get free updates. That's one of the reasons it's a digital book, because things change in this market so fast. We use an online shopping process. Websites change, and whenever something changes, I go uh, change. I go right in. I update the master file so that whenever you open that book, it is relevant. All right, all right. Let's get going. 
Uh, first one's from Facebook. We're taking questions from every platform, but this is Facebook. I have a 2018 MDX, 60,000 miles on it. Live in a small town. There are two recalls going on for the transmission and fuel pump. I can get one crankshaft done this week and looking to sell the car. Feels like it's a lemon and have other cars. Um, well, I mean, a recall is not necessarily make doesn't necessarily make it a bad car. So if you're experiencing issues, then that's different. But, you know, a recall, a lemon is when the same thing keeps going wrong, when it goes wrong three times. So, I mean, don't always take a recall as it means it's a bad car. And I mean, these cars are built, um, computers, things go wrong. Key is recall comes in, they fix them. And uh, it, it, it should, I mean, tons of cars have had recall. It doesn't mean it's a reason to get rid of the car. 60,000 miles on an MDX, you know, that's not a reason to get rid of the car. <laughs> now, if you secretly want to get rid of the car, that's a different story. All right. Um, this is TikTok. Best way to buy an E-Class right now, new or used. And you got to figure out whether you're leasing or purchasing. If you're leasing, you know, you got to go deeper got to go deeper. And what I always say, we always teach if you've been on a broadcast with us before, if this is your first time on a live with us, type one. If you this is your first time on a, on a uh, live with us, type one. I want to see how many. All right. We got a lot of people typing one. OK, so, so something that we talk about that you'll learn is if you're not keeping your cars eight years, you should be leasing. It's not even a question. You know, and I'll prove that to you uh, over the show. Some people who've been on here, who've been learning from me and learning about the math have known that. But um, and I don't care what you were taught. You know, if you stay around long enough, you'll find out that what you were taught has cost you a lot of money. And so uh, that's the first question is if you when you say best way to buy an E-Class, you need to determine how long you're keeping it because you need to see if you're going to outlive the depreciation. And that's for long term people, 8, 10, 12 years. So if you're keeping it eight plus years, then you should be buying. If you're not keeping it eight years, then you should be shopping for a great aggressive lease on an E-Class, getting multiple offers. We get at least five. We will never buy a car. If someone learns from me and you use my stuff, we will never buy a car without getting five offers because they're going to be three to five thousand dollars different between the offers minimum. Uh, this one's Instagram. I was told put a $500 deposit for a BMW I built. Do you agree? Well, uh, let's, let's, there's two things there. Uh, and I always say, y'all, as y'all tap in, someone's going to ask the same question you have. No matter what you think your situation is, there are lots of other people in the exact same situation. So you're going to hear, most likely hear someone ask the same exact question that you wanted to ask. Um, so $500, a deposit on a vehicle is very normal. Could y'all keep tapping the screen on TikTok, keep running the likes up? I appreciate y'all. Um, but what is what you need to know when you're ordering a car is you need to make sure that you have uh, negotiated your price up front. Um, you need to make sure that you've gotten the best offer up front. And we always add to every order that any rebates that may apply when the vehicle comes in come to us as the customer. You cannot negotiate once the vehicle comes in. You've lost all your leverage. The time to negotiate with an order is before you find you sign a, uh, an order. And again, we always get five offers because you just don't know who you're dealing with. And one dealer is always going to beat their competition when you start getting multiple offers. OK, uh, can you trade into a lease? Great question. Yes, many of you will find out uh, this one's from YouTube. Uh, so just keep typing your questions, y'all, and we'll get to as many as we can in the hour. Uh, can you trade in into a lease? So yes, many of you who found out, Deshaun, I should have been leasing a long time ago. I'm not keeping my cars eight years, and I'm in a finance now where I have a car that I own. Many of you, your strategy is going to be to trade into a lease, for sure. You're going to sell. And, and listen, I want you to eliminate that word. Uh, we don't use the word trade. Now, if you have negative equity uh, in the last broadcast, one of the things I talk about is negative equity. If you can't pay the difference and sell to the highest bidder, you now have to do that deal with the dealer that you are going to buy your car from who wins the bid. But everything we teach is a bid. So very. So that's the only situation really where we are giving our old car and bringing it into the new transaction. 
That's why negative equity limits you. So if you have negative equity, I call it the devil to your car deals. You need to know the cause, which is usually you don't understand leasing and you buy your cars and trade them in. And then you need to, um, and then we, you need to, you know, like I said, there's two ways to get out of it. There's two ways. You could either get the offers we teach in our equity assessment process. We get offers from CarMax, Driveway, Carvana, Kelly's Blue Book Instant Cash Offer. Um, these replays do go up on uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook as well. So anything that you miss, hop onto the replay, watch it, and go to that section. Subscribe to the YouTube channel because what we're going to do in the next coming weeks is we're going to start uh, – time stamping the questions so as we build it out although you'll be able to tap in from every platform if you want to watch a replay and say okay we i want to i want the answer to that question that'll only we you can only do that on youtube so uh we'll have that coming in the next couple of weeks but yeah so that's what you're going to do you're going to that's the only time we trade is when there's a negative equity any other time we're getting offers from the highest bidders online and then we are whoever wins that bid gets our car and then we're getting offers from the dealership for the car we want, multiple dealerships, and whoever wins that bid is who we buy our car from. That is how we maximize the money we save when we're buying, and that's how we make sure when we're selling our car, our lease. Uh, who didn't know you could sell a lease? If you did not know you could sell a lease, type one in the comments. Well, we can't just keep typing ones. We got to come up with some different stuff. Type a question mark. You didn't know that you could sell a lease or you didn't know. Here's another one. You didn't know you could sell a car while you still have a loan on it. Some people were taught you might have been taught. Oh, I thought I had to wait for the title. I didn't know I could sell a car because I would have people walk into the dealership and say, Deshaun, that's the new one right there. I'm like, yeah, that's the 20, whatever. Just can't hit. OK, I got four more payments. As soon as I pay off mine, I'm coming to get that. Horrible. Now, I sit that person down and try to educate them on leasing because you're running a race, paying off this car, and as soon as you pay it off, you're going to start a whole nother race on another car. So, yes, you can, you can, uh, you, yeah, you, 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 you can certainly, we never, now look, every lease doesn't have equity. So let's be clear on that. But we never return a lease to a dealership without doing an equity assessment because many of you, Unfortunately, especially all through the pandemic, you were taking leases back and you were giving leases back that had money in them. Or you were saying, OK, I know I have equity, but, you know, you got to work a deal for me. We don't let someone tell us how much equity we have. We we get our payoff and then we call and we get offers for our car. And that tell, I mean, we get our payoff from our bank or leasing company and then we call and we get uh, I mean, we go online, we get online cash offers that tells us how much equity we have. We don't let a dealer tell us how much equity we have at all. All right. This one's TikTok. Nissan said, I can't sell my lease to anyone other than them. No, you can. Okay. See how wording, here's what's important about wording. Your third party restriction means you can sell to any Nissan dealer. So what we do after we get our online offers, we call and we get bids from Nissan dealer used car managers. It doesn't mean, see, they see you go in and you talk to one dealer or the dealer you bought your car from. Oh, they said, I can't sell to anybody but you. First of all, every Nissan dealer is independently owned and operated. So let's what we what 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 I want you to know, if you've ever thought that some people didn't know, you're not going to. These dealers are all owned. See, when you think. All of these Nissan dealers are one. That's why you don't make them compete. See, you've been you've been taught or you've been schooled to think, yo, these are all one dealer. Every Nissan dealer I drive by, that's Nissan. That's why some people say, I won't do business with Nissan. Had a bad experience with that dealer. They're all different. They're all independently owned and operated. And that's why when you start using what I'm teaching you, which is making people compete, you're going to see how different they are. Oh, this one's trying to beat this one. These three right here are all high. Matter of fact, all five of y'all are high. But this one over here that was 45 minutes away, he beat the price on all of y'all. That's what you got to understand. These dealers are independently owned and operated, but they've trained you to make the, you think they're not. 
so that you just keep coming to the one that's closest to you. But yes, we make those dealers when we have a third, we've had tons of people sell vehicles with third party restrictions. You get bids from used car managers because your Nissan might be worth 15 to this Nissan dealership. To this Nissan dealership, it's worth 16. To this one, it's worth 16.5. To this one, it's worth 17. And if you just go into one dealer and give them that car, you're leaving thousands of dollars on the table. And uh, I'm only interested in talking to the people who I like to shine. I'm done leaving money on the table. If that's you, then just don't just keep keep listening and unlearn what you've been taught. A big part of what you're going to do here is unlearn the bad advice. We're going to make sure of it. All right. Uh, Mike Kelly, this one's Facebook. Is there a source anywhere that will tell you any and all rebates available on the vehicle you're looking for? No. No. Nope. You must shop offers. If there was an, if there was just, uh, it'd be great to just know all public re nope. rebates, brand new cars and leases. There's nowhere you can go that say, oh, look, they have all these rebates. Example, like I talked about Sean. I pulled his deal. Sean is somebody that uses my stuff. And if you use my stuff, you get multiple offers. This was his F51, uh, his uh, F50 Lightning. $73,000 vehicle. Not only did the winning dealer save him $4,990, that's from the dealer, but through multiple offers, the rebates were revealed. Fifteen five. dollars Now, you don't know if that's the real rebate. Could be eighteen. dollars When I worked for Mercedes, I sold two Maybachs. The rebates on each of them was $20,000. So some people, I remember when... um. A uh, young lady's named Shonda. She lives in California. She got a Volkswagen. Uh, she got a Volvo last year. She had to go to Southern California because they were blowing everybody away as far as the prices. She said to Sean, "I'm I'm taking a plane, seventy three dollar plane ticket, because the dealer in Southern California is saving me three grand above my best offer up here." And I said, "Well, sounds like a great plane trip. You're gonna have a nice ride home." But what we saw was. Some deal, and this is regular. Some dealers will say, Hey, we got a thousand dollar rebate. I included it. Some dealers, oh, it's a two thousand dollar rebate. I included it. You don't know what it is until you get five offers and then you see the best one. So there's no website that'll tell you what all the rebates are. Be nice. Thank you to everybody who gives gifts to and supports the broadcast, stars, and all of that. And of course, thank you to everyone who's bought my new digital book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. Everything I'm teaching, everything on my videos all over social media is in there step by step so that you can have it all in one spot and you can use this for the rest of your life. It's a digital book, so I always update it when things change. And for our launch, you can get it for 75% off. It's normally $97, but in my TikTok bio for 30 minutes while you're on the show, you can get it for 75% off or in my Instagram bio. All right, let's go to Instagram. Oh, let me post it for you guys here on uh, Facebook and YouTube as well. Anybody who's watching on a TV, you can scan that QR code or you can go to Deshaun'sBook.com. Don't want to forget about you guys. Good to see you, Mike Kelly. All right, let's go. Uh, see, now look at this. This is the language that we got to get out of. Somebody said, Lexus just quoted me. 1065 for at least $58,000 car. Now, I don't know if this person just jumped on, but about five minutes ago, I was talking about Nissan. See how we talk about one dealer like it's the company? And see, we that eliminates our ability to tap into multiple offers. Lexus didn't quote you anything. Lexus is the big company, Lexus USA, that makes cars and has a bank and, and, and you know, has multiple franchise dealers. That's Lexus. You went to Lexus of Rockland County and they quoted you that. You went to Lexus of Englewood and they quoted you that. You see what I'm saying? When you understand that these dealers are independent, you'll stop calling them the brand. They're not the brand. And you'll also start to get multiple offers because Lexus of Englewood competes against this dealer. And so we will never buy a car without getting at least five offers because 80% of dealers are overpriced. 80% of dealers will sell you a car three, four, five grand above what their competition will. 10 grand doesn't matter as much as they can get. 
20% will blow their competition prices away. And that's what we find and that's what we buy from. And we do that right here from home. Now you're welcome to do it the manual way. You can call a bunch of Lexus dealers, ask for the sales manager, get multiple offers, tell them everything that you need so that they can give you a quote. You're more than welcome to do that. I do it online. I, I have the uh, strategy I call a 25 to 5. We connect with 25 dealers. One, because I want to shop out of all their inventory. When you're buying or leasing a brand new car, you want to shop out of all these dealers' inventories so that we don't have to hear, oh, I don't have that color. Oh, you know what? That one's hard. I don't really have it with that option. When I'm shopping out of 25 dealers' inventories, very rarely do we hear that unless it's just a rare car. And in which case, we wouldn't have, going into two dealers would have not worked for us anyway. So when we find out, we don't believe something until five dealers say it, 10 dealers say it. One dealer, no, nah, we don't believe that. All right, let's keep them going. Great questions. Let's keep them going. Keep typing your questions. Um, no, maps is not in my, my book. Do not, if you're in maps, you don't need my book. Yeah, you're you're in the video version of my book and you're coaching with me. So you if they're two two totally separate things. Totally separate things. Um Oh, you just came from the master class. Okay, so you're choosing if you want to join MAPS. It's up to you. It's up to you. It, or you can get the book. It's up to you. I provide the information. I don't hold back information. I just It just depends on what experience you want. You can come on here and let's ask questions, and I'm going to give you the strategy. You can try to remember them. You can watch all my videos. You can get the book if you want it all in one spot. You can. It's totally up to you. As long as you get the information and shop right, that's all I care about. Is it better to lease or own a car? Monica, this is a great question. And I told you guys, someone's going to ask the same question as you. This is the first. Okay, so. who want, I'm going to give you the formula that will save you the money that you need to save and will forever answer the question of should I lease or buy this next car? It's very simple. This question has nothing to do with how much you drive. It has everything to do with how long you're going to keep the car. Because you're ex you're, the expense that you need to concern yourself with when it comes to leasing versus buying is the unseen expense depreciation. When you are buying a car, if you are keeping it seven plus years, like once you get to about seven years, your depreciation has really cooled off and leveled out. What does that mean? You're not losing a lot of value in your car every year. When you buy your car, the first year, the second year, the third year, the fourth year, the fifth year, you're losing high percentages of the value. Whether you drive it or not, it doesn't matter. You could have it parked outside. It's just going down, going down, going down. This is why you got to be clear on the fact, here's what you got to move. understand. I pay for my mileage, I pay for my usage, whether I buy or lease. Because how many people have either said this or you've heard somebody say it? Oh, I want to drive as much as I want, so that's why I don't lease. Who's heard that? I just or said that honestly. I like to drive as much as I as I as I as I want to, so that's why I don't lease. Let's see. Okay, lots of you. So. You pay for that mileage, whether you buy or lease. When you start realizing that, now your mission is going to be, if I pay for it, whether I buy or lease, which one do I pay less for? Now, in the long run, for those of you who keep, who keeps, who on average, because I mix it up. I've had six leases. I kept those three years. I've had, I have a vehicle now that I bought. We're keeping the eight plus year. So there is no one. It's not the person. It's the vehicle who on average has a car that they usually keep eight plus years. Tell me how many years on average you keep your car or even on how many years on average you've had your last car. How many years do you typically keep your car? The car that's outside. How many years you had? It? Just start, I want to see some of your answers. It shouldn't take, you shouldn't be shopping for a car like it's a second job. Once you decide what you want, 
if you're doing it, the, if you're doing it my, if you're doing it your way, it's gonna suck. I'm not going to, I'm just not going to, I'm not here to tell you it's not. I'm like, the old way sucks. That way, I get cars in 90 minutes. The people who use this, these online shopping strategies, I have an online shopping system. It's not something I hope works. I've worked with 1,700 people since 2021, personally, in my uh, video library program. That's outside of the book. We put, and thank God, we're putting thousands of books in people's hands. People, there's thousands of people that are going to be using this. It, uh, it is not going to take them hours or even de days. No, that's over. But the old way, yeah, takes a lot of time and you still may not get what you want. Okay, so I see three years. I see three. I see 15. I see 10. I see 10. Okay, I see, let's see. I see 10. I see two. I see 12. I see eight and 12. Okay. So the question is, how many years have you kept the car that you had? If you're not keeping your car eight years, then what's happening is you're losing so much value. And here's what's happening. When somebody like, somebody like Charles, Charles is on the screen right now. You, if you're, if you're on a, if you're on a, any of the platforms that I can broadcast the the uh, picture, then you'll be able to see it. He's shopping. He got a Hyundai Palisade. This is top 10 most popular vehicles, especially all through the pandemic. This was top 10 most popular vehicles, big SUVs. People were paying, and, so, and, and you may have. You may be like, Deshaun, I got a Palisade. I paid 3000 over sticker. I paid... You know, if five thousand over sticker. I've heard people were charging ten grand over sticker. So he's leasing this vehicle. He said, "I reached out to thirty-five Hyundai dealers. I have something in my book. I call it the twenty-five to five. So you might be like, how did he reach out to thirty-five? Took him about thirty minutes. We do this all from home. He's using my copy and paste templates." He said, I reached out to 35 Hyundai dealers. I got 10 quotes back. The offers range from, and this is important because when you properly shop offers, you're going to see a big spread. If you don't see a big spread when you're shopping offers, you did not shop right. That's used cars. Whenever I'm buying a used car, the car I bought, it was 31 grand. I saw vehicles from 31 up to 37, 38. When we shop offers, you should see a three to five thousand dollar difference between your best offer, who wins the bid, and your highest offer. That's when you know you shop correct. So he said the offers were between 1.23 and 1.66. I'm a high mileage driver, so I so you know he he adjusts the mileage after, but his his payment on a forty-eight thousand dollar, forty-eight five ninety-five palisade is five ninety-seven. They told you that leasing was like renting. One of the worst things you heard. Who's heard that? Leasing was like renting. Renting a car is hundreds of dollars per day in most cases. Leasing a car is pennies on the dollar when you get great leases. And don't pay attention. He gave them $597. We always shop our lease deals with only first month's payment due at signing. So don't listen to the advertisements. Don't listen Pretty much, if you're going to do what I'm telling you to do, you got to stop listening to everything but me. And that's not egotistical. Try what I'm telling you. But if you start listening to people, oh, it's no deals out here. Not for you, there isn't. Because you're using old strategies. Oh, man, I went to all these dealers, man. Nobody want to make a deal. For you. Oh, I saw a commercial that said to Lisa Hyundai Palisade was... Four ninety seven a month, and I had to come up with four grand plus taxes and fees. We don't look at those. So for real, if you're gonna do this and you want to save the money that Charles is saving and that a bunch of other people I'll show you are saving, you can't listen to none of that stuff. None of that is deals. That's noise. Deals are not advertised. This they will never advertise. You will never see. Come drive a Hyundai Palisade, fifty thousand dollar vehicle, five ninety seven a month, no money due at signing, and that includes tax. You'll never see it. That's a real deal. Real deals are not advertised. And if you're not keeping your cars eight years, somebody like Charles who's learned to lease, he's paying so much less than you. So there's two ways to win with buying cars. 
You're either going to keep them a long time, eight plus years, so you can outlive all this depreciation, all that, all that money you're going to lose, or you're going to get great lease deals. But there's this group of people you're stuck in between. You like some of you buy and keep. Look at all the people on here who put 10 years, 10 years. Those are people you want. You kept a vehicle 10 years, even if you overpaid for it a little bit, you still want. Because the long-term wins, the long-term value will exceed anything that you might have overpaid for. Now, if you got a, kill, a crazy deal and crazy huge discount, even better. Those are the people who win. But the leasers who get great lease deals, you win. But the people who you, you're stuck in between, you're stuck in between. You buy your cars and then you trade them in two, three, four, five years, six years. You haven't picked a side. You won't lease and then you won't keep. And you're destined to lose if you're in there. There's another group of people who are losing. You lease and then you buy the vehicle. Stuck in between. Stuck in between. You're losing. And it's time to stop. Because, well, anyway, let's go. Let's keep the questions coming. Let's keep the questions coming. Uh, somebody on Instagram said he can't hear me. How's the, how's the volume on Instagram? Can y'all give me a clear? Is it him or is it, or is it me? Let me know. All right, come on. Let's keep the questions rolling. Have any bad credit questions been answered yet? Uh, there's no bad questions that have been asked. Okay, good. It's clear. So check your audio, man. Check, check your audio. Uh, what credit score do you need? And what is your, and w well, in my book is a plan for every credit score. Like if I couldn't lease, I'd be setting myself up for a lease. If I needed a vehicle right now, well, first of all, let's say I don't have the credit to lease right now and I don't need a vehicle. See, who knows that there's a very big difference between need a car and want a car? Who knows that? Very big difference. Sometimes you could mix those up. Yeah, I want a car. Do I need a car? That's different. If your car was stolen, totaled, you need a car. If you if if you're just like, you know what? I'm looking around. You know, I want a new car. You you want a car. Now, if you have the credit, great. But if you know that based on what you're going to learn or what you've learned so far, I've got tons of broadcasts we've talked about leasing. We're never going to stop talking about people who don't keep their cars 8 years. You're breaking the 8-year rule. And you, you should be leasing. If I could qualify for a lease and I needed a car, I'm getting an inexpensive car that I can use to build credit. That's my only per It's only two purposes for that car. If I know I should be leasing, Deshaun, I want to drive these brand new cars. I want to pay these pennies on the dollar. I want these low payments and everything, but my credit's not there and I need a car. Then I'm getting me the least expensive car I could get a loan on. It's going to be for two purposes, to get me where I need to go and to build credit so I can lease in two years. Now, if you go out and you get a twenty dollars or $30,000 car and pay 20% interest rate on it, you won't be leasing in two years because that car is going to have so much negative equity. When In two years, when you go to try to switch it and sell it, you're going to see I owe too much and now that's going to blow out my lease deal. I would have got a great lease deal, but I still owe that going $23,000 on that scat pack that, that, that was nine years old with 90,000 miles. It's your choice. You could set yourself up or you could set yourself back. All right. Let's go. We're paying $20,000 down on a new car for $55K. Be advisable. Nikki, great question. Nikki asks, I always say, y'all, if you stay on long enough, somebody else is going to ask the same question you have because many of you are in the same situation. There's no one on here. I don't care what you think. Your situation is not unique. It's not unique. Millions of people a year buy cars, and, and many of you are in the exact same situation, so you're going to hear your question. Now, she said, with paying twenty grand as a down payment, on a brand new car for 55K, be advisable. If you plan to keep the car eight plus years, then sure. There's nothing wrong. What See, I want you to look at down payment money when you're buying, like paying cash. People weigh it the same. What's the rate? What am I doing with my money? 
So let's say the interest rate, before we buy any car, we always check to see is there any special interest rates? 0%, one, you know, 0.99%, 1.99, especially in the days where interest rates are high. We check this, we check this anyway, but it doesn't matter. Interest rates could be super low. We're still gonna check this. So some people will say, if the money is very cheap, then I'm not gonna put much money down if my money is working for me. So let's just say you got 20 grand under the mattress or in a safe, then that money's not working for you. It's just cash. So you may not care about throwing it at the car. Someone who has money in the stock market and mutual funds and real estate and investments that are earning them, you know, eight, 10 percent or more they're going to put less down and they're going to use the bank's money if it's cheap. Now, if the bank's money is expensive, 6%, 7%, 8%, then whether, you know, in those cases, it makes sense to not use any leverage because the money's expensive. So if I was buying and money is, is uh, expensive, then I'm going to put as much money as I can down. I'm going to look to pay off the car, but only if you're keeping it eight years. If, you, if you're not keeping this car at least eight years, then you're about to lose a ton of that money. 20 grand, you're about to lose a ton of that. A ton. Because you should be leasing. You should be shopping for leases, not for purchases. We must, you, your, if your goal is not to be one of those, one of the people on here, when I, when I ask how long have you had your car, and they put nine, 10, 12 years. If your goal is not to get to that level, because at that level, you've outlived depreciation. Your car has lost tons of value the first three, four, five, six years. Tons of value. But it gets to a point where it's cooled off. It gets to a point where you're not losing that much money anymore. And that's where most people go and trade a car and, get, and do it all over again. They say, look, I went through the worst depreciation for six years, but let's go and do this again now. Start all over. Where you're supposed to be at that point, like, now this is where I keep it. Cars paid off, depreciation's cooled off. I'm going to keep this thing, and I'm going to now get all of this money that I put into this car back out of it. I'm not going to go swap this and do this thing all over again. If you are that for Deshaun, I'm not keeping a car that long, then you should be shopping for leases. Deshaun, I don't have the credit. Then you should be getting a car that sets you up for at least in two years. Very simple. Boundaries. Key Rock, good to see you. Good to see you. I see a lot of people. If this is your first time on the broadcast with us, can you type a one? I always like to shout out the new people and, um, and shout out to the sharer. Shout out to everybody who tagged somebody who invited somebody to the broadcast on Instagram. If you hit the share button, you could actually run down the list and just share with like several of your friends. And look, I'm just telling you, as we get this information out, you don't want to see your friend's car deal in a year. And you're like, when did you get that car? And you're like, you don't follow Deshaun? And I know I never heard of him because most people have no idea who the heck I am. And you're like, man, I've been following him for like a year. No, didn't I tell you I was shopping for a car? Why, why you ain't tell me about him? Now you now you might lose a friend. You might lose a friend. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right. To everybody that just jumped on everything that I'm teaching, if you've seen any of my social media videos, it all comes out of my brand new book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. It's a digital book. And I kept it digital because I have links in there. I got links to videos. I got links to my scripts. And I update it. When things change in the market, if I had 100,000 books in your houses, now something changes, a website changes, that now here's the here's what you, here's what you'll be hearing. Hey guys, um yeah, I know you bought my book last year, but you know, a couple of the websites changed, so I just released volume 2, the updated version. Go get that now. Right in my <laughs> That's the only thing you could do. I wouldn't be wrong, it's just that's all you could do if you have a print book. With an, with a digital book, update, you open it a year from now. Any websites that are not relevant anymore, like Vroom. Vroom went out of business a couple months ago. They were in part of our bidding strategy. You open it up, you don't see Vroom because I updated the file. So you can get it for 75% off as part of our launch in my TikTok bio. It's normally $97 in my Instagram bio. Or you can go to Deshaun'sBook.com if you're on Facebook or YouTube. I'll put the link for y'all. And let's keep the questions coming. 
Let's go. But get your book. Once it hits, once 30 minutes expires, it's $97, which is still great money. So it doesn't matter. You're still going to win. But 24 is better than 97. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. This one's from Facebook. We're taking questions from all platforms. So keep typing them. I typically lease, but I want to buy a used car three years or older, plan to keep it for a minimum of three to five years. Can't make this stuff up. Paul, how long you been on the broadcast? How long you been on the broadcast, Paul? So if you've been on the broadcast for 10 minutes, how did you just hear me talk about if you're not keeping your card eight years, you shouldn't be purchasing? You're losing, brother. You're losing. I'm making this as clear as it can possibly be. You need to be locked in. I didn't say if it's not used. Don't please listen. Take what I say exactly the way I say it. Exactly the way I say it. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. That's the only. Now, if it doesn't work, you come back to me and you say something. But if I'm teaching you something that is that. I would and I hate this. 90 percent of people are doing incorrectly. Then in order for you to really win, you got to be totally locked into the details, bro. Like we talking numbers, we talking financial, like we talk. So you got to be in. And look, if it because this is new for you, you might have to be like, all right, D, I got to go back and I got to rewatch the broadcast. But as long as I have I have laid this out for you all in a way where I don't want you thinking, because this is an industry that I've been in for now total. 2006, we're going on 18 years now. And I know that in order for you to win, all of you, I have to make this in a way where you guys don't have to think. Because the minute you start, got to think and I got to remember, what should I say there? I'm setting you up for failure. So best thing is just, if you hear Deshaun say this, lock it in as a rule, especially if I say it's a rule, like the eight-year rule. And the eight-year rule is this. This is Step one in my book. My book is seven steps. Step one is the most important question. How many years are you keeping the car? Why is that the most important question? Because that's going to determine whether you buy or lease. If you answer that question and say eight years, you're buying. If you say three years, you're leasing. Eight year rule, eight year rule. If I'm not buying and keep, if I'm not keeping eight years, I shouldn't be buying. And I don't care how much money I save. If I buy when I should have leased, it does not matter how much money I save. Let's go back to one of these lease deals. Let's look at Danielle. Danielle is driving a $44,000 Audi. She's paying $550 a month. Let's just say somebody went in to buy that same Audi. Y'all like y'all shout out to y'all liking this, uh, tapping the screen on TikTok. I appreciate y'all shooting the likes up. Let's just say Danielle, who leased this Audi for five fifty a month, that's all she gave them five fifty. She drove off. Let's just I, I'm, I'm I want to show you the hammer this home this buying versus leasing thing. I'm like we are gonna go we're gonna hit it from all angles. Like we are gonna hit it straight on from the side, hook it, uppercut because. I got to, like, you got to be, because they've been hitting y'all with bad information for so long. They've been hitting y'all with bad lease commercials, Dave Ramsey videos, viral videos. They've been hitting y'all with all this stuff from so many angles, so we got to do it the same way. So let's take Danielle, who got a really good lease, five fifty a month, and it's a $44,000 car. I want to show you that if you buy... When you should have leased, it doesn't matter how good of a deal you get. You lost. You lost big money. Let's say somebody comes in and they're looking at the same Audi that Danielle just leased. She just leased it. 
they want to buy it. Now, let's just say they just a great, let's say they get a better, let's say they even get multiple offers like I teach and somehow they save $5,000, just make up a number. Save that on more than 10% of the, per, of the price. So they buy that car for 39,000. Now, once their taxes and everything go in, they're gonna be about 42. Every $5,000 is what, y'all? Every $5,000 that you borrow on a loan, some of you know, if you're new, you may not know, but you're about to find out, every $5,000 is how much per month. So this person came in, they used their skills, they might've used the negotiator or they used my strategy, got bids, they end up getting a $45,000 Audi, $44,000 Audi for 39. Now they're gonna finance about 42. There we go, thanks MK. Every hundred, it's a hundred bucks. So where does that put them per month? 42, about 800, about $830. Yeah, but he saved, he, right, and he saved five grand. Make it, matter of fact, no, man, he stole a car. He saved 10 grand. He went in, got the brand new Audi A3, saved 10 grand. They just wanted to, they just wanted to give them a price no one else in the country has ever gotten. We want to give you a price no one else in this world has ever paid. Take 10 grand off that. Instead of 44, sell it to them for 34. My God, I really won with this. Now, Danielle drove off for 550. He gets it for 34, taxes and everything. He's about 38. Every $5,000, 100 bucks a month. What's his payment? 38, 750. on a deal no one else will ever get in this world. Still paying $200 more per month than Danielle. Do y'all see what we're talking about? Is that clear? That's why the first question, how many years are you gonna keep the car, which is the leasing versus buying question, the eight year rule question, is where your deal go foundation. Let's say somebody says, you know what? Deshaun, I'm not buying new. I'm gonna buy a pre-owned one. Okay, you gonna buy a pre-owned Audi? You're not keeping it though. Nah, I ain't gonna keep it. I'll keep it about five years. Okay. And you're not gonna lease it. Nah, nah, I don't believe in leasing. Okay. Danielle drives off in her new brand new Audi 550. This person comes. Let's say a brand, brand new 44. What's a good price on a three year old one? I wanna ask y'all, because I'm not gonna leave nothing to chance. I wanna show you that no matter how you slice it from logic, it's no way to win when you should have leased, but you bought. So let's say brand new one's 44. How much is a used one? Good deal on a used one. Brand new car, 44,000. Three year old one. What's a good price on a three year old one? Let's be conservative. What we think? What we think? Y'all take some time, think about it, because it's something you got to. Three year old Audi, brand new was 44. What should a, a pre owned one be? Can we say, okay, I was going to say 28, Mike. Mike said 30. The Don said 30. That's fair. 27. So let's call it anywhere in there, right? Let's go with the lowest one. Pre-owned one shouldn't be 40. Stick around. If the car is brand new 40, then at 44, then the pre-owned one shouldn't be 40 for three years old. Stay here, okay? Stay here. We're gonna make sure that you 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 save money, cause. But let's just let's just go deep. Let's just say the lowest number somebody called out on this broadcast is what the person gets it for twenty seven thousand dollars. Twenty seven thousand dollars tax put them about thirty. Every five thousand dollars, how much a month? Hundred bucks. What's their payment? Six hundred. Is it clicking? If it's clicking, we just compared a good lease deal that Danielle got, what's coming out of her house, what she's driving. Danielle pulls up to two, next to two people. Let's just say they all at the traffic light. Three Audi A3s at a traffic light. Danielle in the middle. This woman over here, she bought hers, got a great deal on it. And this used one over here. Danielle's paying $550 for a brand new one. Person to her right bought it, paying. What was it? What was the person who bought the new one paying a month? 
Was it eight? It was eight, right? And the person to our left who's buying, who's driving the used one, three years old, one year left on the warranty, is paying six. This is why I fight for you to understand. This is how you got to understand. So when you think about it, and some of you, you might be saying to yourself, Dad, Deshaun, I haven't kept my cars eight years. That's me. So what are you going to do now? I got to be, I wish that I could meet you where you're at and be like, hey, you're doing so good with these cars. You're just saving all the money you should be saving. You know, you're just killing it. But let me show you how to do a little better. I wish that was like, that'd be easier to deliver. That's not me. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to, I got to deliver the bad news first. I'm from an industry that taught you how to do things wrong. And then you got influencers who talk about cars, who know nothing about financial strategies with cars. They don't, they don't give you strategies that have failed you. So I got to come in and tell you, yo, that was all wrong. Now it hurts because you're like, dag, I lost money. But I'm the only one that's going to give you something that say, all right, you lost the money, but you still got a couple more cars left. We still got your family. You still got your friends. We could win from now on. So that is the rule. If you are not keeping your cars eight years, doesn't matter. You buy, uh, doesn't matter. New cars, used cars. When you say, I want a new car, if you ain't keeping it eight years, you should be shopping for great lease deals all day long. You're going to keep tons of money in your pocket. You're going to drive the best cars. Now, if you're like the opposite, Deshaun, I'm keeping my cars eight, 10 years then you shouldn't even be thinking about leasing. Now, that doesn't mean that's your family because your child might be or your spouse might be, you, you know, man, I don't want to keep this one eight years. Okay, then your spouse should be getting a lease and you should be getting a purchase. Every car could be different. All right? Everybody getting value out of this? If you're getting value, type dollar signs. If you're getting value, I, I know, look, I don't mind. I'm from an industry of confrontation, so I don't mind coming in and having the latest down. But here's what I do know. A year from now, five years from now, you're going to be like, man, I'm glad I learned how to do this thing right. Outside of the bidding, outside of the getting, how we shop, that's one thing. We get bids. You're going to love that. You're not going to be doing this negotiations anymore. If you're not a good negotiator, type not good. If you're not a good negotiator, type not good. I'm going to show you how bids is going to save you all the money. Danielle didn't, she, she's not negotiating. She didn't negotiate for this 550 a month. She sat at home, she got bids. Sat at home, did all her deals, made people bid for her business. Did all her counter offers that I told her how to do online, email. They ain't got to talk to nobody. That's how you win. When you're typing Deshaun, not good. You win by making people bid. All right? That's how you do. But outside of how we get deals, the, the, the leasing versus buying, that's the foundation of the deal. And if your deal's on the wrong foundation, you can't get a good deal. So the first thing you always got to do, put your deal on the right foundation. I should be leasing. Based on how long I'm going to keep the car, I should be buying based on how long I'm going to keep my car. All right. Is it true that you're not responsible for major repairs when leasing? That's correct. Now, you can't bring the vehicle back damaged, but if you have an accident, you run it through insurance, it doesn't affect you. It, it, it's, you, you have no penalties. You could have 10 accidents when you're leasing as long as you run them through insurance. Now, if you had 10 accidents on a purchase, <laughs> what is that doing to your value? You owned your car. You got 10 accidents. If you lease, you don't have to worry about it. Let me put my banner back up for those of you who just jumped on or those of you who would like to shine. I need that book. What's the name of it? My new digital book is called Car Shopping for People that Hate Car Shopping. It is not just leasing versus buying like I just broke down, but also how we shop and make dealers bid for our business, how we make banks bid and credit unions bid, and how we make buyers bid. We don't trade cars. so. Everything is in there and you can get it for 75% off. It's normally $97. It'll be in your inbox in literally 10 minutes or less. 
really like three, four minutes. You can get it in my TikTok bio, but it's only 75% off for 30 minutes. Once it goes to zero, it goes back to $97, which is still a great price. Or you can get it in my Instagram bio, click that website, and grab your copy for 75% off. But yeah, when leasing, here's the key. When leasing, you may have heard that with leasing, oh, the car has to be perfect. Absolutely not true. Many leasing companies have something called the credit card rule. So if a, if a scratch could be covered by a credit card, they're not going to charge you. They allow for normal wear and tear. No bank, no leasing company expects you to bring a car back in three years looking like it just left the showroom. They allow for normal wear and tear. These are your ding. These are your dings. These are your brush scratches. You're in a shopping mall. Somebody opens their car, dings your car. Allowable. What's not, what's going to be billed is things that would be billed if you own the car and was trying to sell it. See, if you own the car, people wouldn't be looking at that stuff saying, oh, I'm not buying it. Look, you got that little ding there. No. It doesn't affect your value that much. Now, if you came and the tires were bald, well, that affects your value. Uh, if you came and there was a scratch on it, it looked like somebody keyed the car, oh, that's going to affect your value. Those things are the like those are the things that get billed for, and they call those excess wear and tear. That's not normal wear and tear. That means you know a baseball size dent, a, a crack in the windshield. These are things that are called excess wear and tear. So, you know, if you're getting billed for damage on your lease, it's because you've really gone outside of normal wear and tear. But the car does not need to be perfect. The car does absolutely not need to be perfect. They allow for normal wear and tear on a lease. OK, uh, let's see. Hold on. All right. We got a little more time. Let's keep it going. Jay, I have the book. Use it. Congrats. Use it and win. And please, everyone who has the book, Please DM me. I don't see DMs, so I'm not even gonna say DM. Um, thank God we've had, we have over two million followers across four platforms, and uh, I we get hundreds of DMs. There's just no way for me to see them. The minute you purchase the book, I give you a support email, just in case. Because sometimes you type in your email wrong, you're typing fast, and you're trying to get back to the broadcast, and you know it won't be there. Give it ten minutes. Make sure you check spam. But make sure you send me your success story. I want to see when you get your car and I want to see the deal. See, this is the difference when you start getting great deals. Let me tell you how different this is going to be. You're going to be just as excited about the deal as the car. See, people, if you don't know how to get great deals, you don't broadcast the deal. You just say, oh, look at my new car. When you start getting incredible deals, Danielle, when you start getting deals like this, save and it's not just it's not just leases. We got tons of people who who got purchase deals too. Like I showed Sean, Sean, Sean's getting the F one fifty. Look, he's getting the F one fifty Lightning XLT. He sent me this a couple of days ago. Seventy three thousand dollars MSRP. He's getting twenty thousand. He's getting over twenty one. He's getting over twenty thousand dollars off. He's purchasing that, keeping that truck. So when you start getting stuff like this, you're gonna broadcast the deal. So you're going to be so excited. Yo, not only did I get this great car, look at what I did. So send me that. Deshaun, look at what I just paid for this. Yo, look at this lease deal I just got. Deshaun, look at this used car. Look how much I just saved from the original MSRP. That's when you are confident in the deals. Because I know, I know you buy your cars and you don't want to talk numbers. Most people will not send me numbers. Most people will not send me numbers. I've been on social media now for what, May, May 2021. Going on, going on three years, very rarely do I get a deal that somebody bought. You don't have confidence in the deal. And no one wants to hear that you overpaid. So, but now, oh, you'll be emailing me. Deshaun, look at this price. Damn, I stole this car. Look at this, Deshaun. This was the blowest out of all the offers. And that's what I want. No, Stephen, you shouldn't be buying your lease. All you're doing when you're buying a lease, look, somebody, uh, this is TikTok. Somebody asked, should I buy my lease? Why? And the answer is no, unless you're keeping it eight years. Because here's the thing. I know some of y'all may have heard about, uh, heard, heard this thing that's not a thing called lease to buy. Who's heard about that? Who's heard lease to buy? 
Who's heard that? Lease to buy. Who's heard that? Okay. Steven said, I never heard of it. Okay. What it is is people will lease their car, turn around and buy it. We don't do that because you've already had the car for three years. And what you're doing is it goes back to not picking out. If you say all you're doing when you buy a lease is buying a used car. That's it. If you look at it the exact same way, that is exactly what it is. So when you look at it that way, now what you're asking yourself is, Deshaun, should I buy a used car or should I lease a new car? Now, if you tell me you're keeping it eight plus years, then buy the used car. That's the only thing you're doing when you buy your lease. You're buying a used car. People used to come into the dealership. It was the it was it was one of the least exciting things that I ever did. I'm gonna tell you why. And I would try to make it exciting. It never was. People come in. I set up the appointment for them to come buy their lease out. They wouldn't listen to me in some cases. Now, again, if you're keeping the car forever, if you say, Deshaun, I love this car. You know what? I leased it for three years. I, I, I could see myself keeping it for another eight to 10. Easy. I love this car. Then buy it. 100%. But a lot of times, nope, it wasn't. They come in and they just like, you know, oh, I don't feel like shopping or, hey, you know, uh, whatever reason. They buy the lease. They come out of the office and I'm like, all right, hey, paperwork's done. Because you have to, you're literally starting another loan or you're, you're laying out a, a good financial check for a car you've been driving for three years. At least when you lease, I mean, at least when you buy a, a used car, it's a different car, you know? So it's like, there's some excitement there. It's new to you. It's new to me. So when you buy your new, your, your used car, it's like, got me, a, got me a new car. It's pre-owned, but it's, when you buy your lease, you come out of that office and you're like, Dag, I just signed up for five years of payments on a car that I've already been paying on for three years. Most people who are going to buy their lease, it's going to take the, a five or six year loan to get the same or similar lease payment. So if your lease payment was 400, usually to get to about a $400 finance payment, you need a six year loan. What's six plus three? Three years you leased it and then you take a six year loan. Nine years. Nine years. Name of the book is Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. Somebody asked, what's the name of the book? So nobody, would anybody on here, you you you, you all are, are smart adult, would anybody on here sign up for a nine-year loan? Anybody? Anybody? No. No. Look, she said, hell no. No. So that's what you that's what most people are doing when they're buying their lease. And you look up, here's the you literally you look up and most a lot of people ain't even planning on keeping it. They just don't want to shop. See, when you learn to shop, Stephen, you'll see it's deals everywhere. Like the deals, like I've been helping people for the last three years make deals all across the country. It's deals every when you know how to shop. When you don't know how to shop, there's deals nowhere. So most people, they're just buying their lease to buy some time. Here's what happens. Literally, they'll pay the lease for three years, buy it, take out a six-year loan. You look up in three years or two years, let's say three. And you're like, all right, you know what? The market seems a little better. Meanwhile, it's been fine the whole time. And you're like, okay, man, I've been driving this car. I leased it for three years. I had it for six years, man. Let me go. Let me go and get something else now. Shop. You still owe three years of payments. What a shame to have a car you paid on for six years and you still owe three years of payments. One of the worst financial decisions people are making. But again, if you're going to keep the car long term and pay it off, keep it eight more years then buy the lease. But if that's not you, you should be shopping for an aggressive lease deal right now. All right. This one's Facebook. Sandy said, Brother Deshaun, help a brother out. So I'm looking for Ben's GLS 2018 to 20. I'm having trouble with the sheet. 
I can't figure out the discount because I can't obtain original sale price. Also, when listing from highest to lowest, should I list from range of years or each sheet is broken down by years? I always do lowest to highest. I do the lowest price to highest. So whenever I open up the offers, you're using what's in my book, Sandy. You just open up. Once you have the marketplaces, you create your account, you open them all up, and then you're sorting, you're sorting lowest to highest because you can't. Who knows what we're trying to do when it comes to market value? Who remembers? What's the only thing important for us when it comes to market value? Let's see. And, and, I, and you know what? We've been getting a lot of new people on here every, every broadcast, so I can't even ask that. I can't even ask that because, you know, a lot of people on here for the first time. The only, yes, Mike called it, yes, below market. So that's the only thing. So how do you get a below market used car? You got you to gotta know what the market is. So when you open up those tabs, Santa, you're going from lowest to highest because you need to see what the low side of the market is. Doesn't matter the year. I won't sort for the year. I will sort for the lowest value in the market because if you've done the perfect budget calculator, the perfect budget calculator, which is in step three, that's going to tell you, it's going to give you those goals of how much you can spend on a car with taxes and everything. And so when you have those goals, now what you're looking for is, yeah, I'll go lowest to highest. But if I see a 19 or something that I like, then I'll go with that because I know it's within my budget. So I don't know. I just need to know what the lowest price in the market is. Now, you could also do it by year. You want to do all the 18s. You could do that. You want to do all the 19s. You can do that. If you have, because what I would do is I look for the newest year first. So if I was looking 18 to 20, I'm trying to see is there a is there a 20 in my budget? And then if I don't see it, all right, now let me add 19. Is there a 19 in my budget? And then I go into 18. I'm only going older when I need to, not just from the start. I'm starting with the newest vehicle and seeing can I get a great quality vehicle, new as possible, in that budget. And then if I can't, then I'm going to open it up to additional years. And when it comes to getting the MSRP, there's three ways to do it. You could uh, you can try, try, get clutch. I'm going to give you this website. If because every manufacturer doesn't have a deal with Carfax. Carfax shows the window sticker for the brands that they have a deal with. I think it's probably it's probably like 15, but there's 40 brands. So. I would I would narrow it down to your top vehicles. And if you see that they're priced great, then you can use withclutch.com. I think it's with, with clutch.com. Um, we're looking to build a software because they charge five dollars. I haven't found a spot that besides Carfax. Um, and you know, are you are you able you've been able to get those Carfaxes on the dealers' websites, Sandy? You've been able to bypass, don't buy the Carfaxes on the marketplaces. Go to the dealer's website, like the book says, and, and that's what you do. You need to get the original window sticker price, y'all, um, because you just, you're just you going to pick the wrong car. I have four Infinity trucks that I had narrowed my search down to, and they were all around the same price when I bought mine. They were all 2020s. They were all the same color, interior color. They on, When I'm looking at them online, they all look the same. They're, they're major differences. And the biggest difference is they're all asking between 30 and 32,000, but one of them brand new was 46, one of them was 48, one of them was 52, and one of them was 54.5. And that's the one I got. See how see how major that is? Dad, what if I would have picked the $46,000 one because they were asking 30? So I picked the one that was 46,000 brand new. So the one I got had the biggest discount. So when we're shopping, when we're when we're making our final decision on which used car we're going to buy, we're not looking at the dealer, the, dis the discount the dealer is giving us. That doesn't matter. What matters is which one of these cars have the biggest discount from the original price when it was new. If this car was 50,000 brand new and they're asking 35, and then this car was 55,000 new. And they're asking 35, this one's better. You're giving me 5,000 more value. I wouldn't know that. On top of that, I wouldn't even know what's in the car, what equipment, what packages. So I need to know that to be able to make the best decision.
We shop different. We shop different. Normally in the left hand corner under original MSRP. Oh, wait, I couldn't see that. All right, let's see. Anything on Instagram? We, still, we got a couple more minutes and then we'll wrap. Um, shout out to everybody who got my new book. Use it. Use it. I don't even say read it. That's not a book you read. That's a book you use. It's a step by step action guide. Do this, then do this, then go here then type this in. And when you get to step seven, because it's seven steps to saving time, money, and avoiding dealerships, when you get to step seven, step seven is delivery. So when you get to step seven, I'm congratulating you. Good job. You stuck to the process. You saved money. Enjoy. Like, let's make sure delivery goes smooth. You shouldn't be reading step seven and then saying, all right, I read the whole book. Now let me go back and car shop. No, that's not the way this book is. It's Action guy. Normally $97. If you haven't visited the site yet, you can still get it for 75% off for 30 minutes. As part of our official book launch, it'll be in your inbox in a matter of minutes. You can go to my TikTok bio and grab yours. You can go to my Instagram bio and grab yours. And uh, you'll have everything I teach in one spot, step by step. All right. I need this. Perfect. Now it makes sense. I was confused. You know what I mean? Appreciate you. Use it. I'm, I'm excited for you. Just keep stick to the process and, uh, you know, stay in the boundaries. You'll be just fine. It's different when you're operating with a plan. New here. Is this to help to when buying a car or selling? No, we're not. You're talking about selling cars as like a car salesman? No, we talk about buying and leasing cars, like and how to how to get great deals. Uh, the book is normally $97. Somebody said, how much is the book? It's normally $97. That's the price it will be. That's the price it was before we launched it. And uh, for uh, for our launch, it's 75% off. So if you get there before the timer is uh, before 30 minutes, you get it for $24. And, and $97 is a great price because you'll look back on it. If you use this book, this book will save you. This book's probably worth five, ten thousand dollars $10,000. It's worth five grand each car you get, I would think. Um, so depends on how many cars you're going to get. Uh, okay, this one's YouTube. How do you turn the rent charge on a lease agreement into an APR? No, we don't. We don't shop like that. You're not going to do anything by converting the the the. the, the you, you, so what he's talking about is taking the money factor and converting it into an interest rate. You multiply it by twenty four hundred. That doesn't matter. Here's what matters. Listen, we take the the way we do lease deals. We divide the MSRP into the monthly payment. That gives us a percentage. We divide the monthly payment into the MSRP. That gives us a percentage. This is based on the 1% rule. Every savvy lease buyer, well, most savvy lease people who, who, who've been getting great lease deals for like the last 20 years, they all you always knew about the 1% rule. It was like, if you could get at least 1% of the MSRP or lower, no money down, you stole it. So all my leases, every single time I've leased, and I haven't leased since 2019, that was my last one, have been under 1%. My Jeep Grand Cherokee, $35,000 vehicle, $330 a month. Uh, I, had th I had four Infinities, all under 1%. My Q50s, $45,000 vehicle, I was paying three. My highest payment was 390. The one before that was 365 or 345. The one before that was 325. These were $40,000, $42,000 vehicles. Uh, my Pontiac G6s was two fifty six dollars a month. These were like 20. That was my highest one. That was my first lease. And I had to pay a little bit more because I was just establishing my credit as a leaser. But even that, that was probably 1.1%. So the 1% lease rule has been around way before I even got into the car business. What wasn't around, though, was when people were paying too much for leases. So we came up with the 1.5% rule because once you your once your lease payment is more than 1.5% of the MSRP with no money down, you're paying too much for a vehicle you're giving back. So lots of people, especially through the pain, I, I was making videos. People were making videos. Hey, you really should explore leasing. No one was telling you guys how to make sure you weren't overpaying for the lease. Now that doesn't mean it's a great deal. Like that was like the max, two extremes. 1%, I stole a vehicle. 1.5%, I overpaid. 
So somewhere in between here is good deals. So when you look at this and you're like, okay, you know, lease deals. What was the question? Oh, no, it wasn't Stephen. It wasn't leasing seems so costly. Now, somebody had said something. How did I get on that subject? What was I talking about that I went into a lot of lease deals? Thank you for your time and expertise. Appreciate it. I told y'all, y'all know when I'm doing these rapid fire Q&A, especially, oh, we're an hour and 15 minutes in. See, that's usually my body clock saying, all right, it's about time to wrap. <laughs> uh, oh, no, this is what it was. I'm it, 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 Alex from YouTube. His question's on the screen. He was talking. See, there's plenty of people who walked into the dealership when I was there. They had their financial calculator. Let me, hold on, let me put a lease deal up here. And what they would do is they would ask me for the rate, the residual, and they would convert the money factor to an interest rate. And they're like, okay, what's the selling price and all of that? That's not how you get your best offer because you don't know what the rebates are. You don't know what I'm holding on to. What are the unadvertised incentives? You have no idea. So the only way to get the deals that you see on these screens, this is Kimberly, $91,000 Maserati, $944 a month. <laughs> 90 look just got it recently this market ninety-one thousand dollar maserati 944 a month she didn't get this by converting the interest rate and what's the rent charge what's the rent charge on the car no she got bids the way i teach we are going to get at least five bids and that's how we save this money look at bonita 2022 middle of the pandemic everybody else some and, and you might you might have a tell you ride that you're leasing, paying seven, eight hundred dollars a month. Maybe you put money down. She's driving a tell you ride six hundred a month. She gave him six hundred bucks and drove off. Forty, forty seven thousand dollar truck. Look, Charles Palisade, we talked about him earlier. Forty eight thousand dollar truck, five ninety seven a month. You see what I'm saying? There's no we don't worry about anything other and they know their percentages. Look, look at Charles. Alex, look at Charles. They know their percentages. They divide the monthly payment of the offers. We get all our offers with first month's payment only out of pocket. We divide that monthly payment into the MSRP. It gives us a percentage. And that's how we compare our lease bills. That's how we know who saved us. You can see, he said, all my offers were between 1.23 and 1.6. None of that, nothing else matters. He don't care what the money factor is on that. He doesn't care what the residual value is. That does not matter. What matters is how much am I paying for this car to drive it for three years? The lower the percentage, the better the deal. He don't care what rebates was included. Does not matter. We don't, we can't, we don't complicate this. And what I find is people who are going to shop like this, Alex, if you're not going to get bids, you're not going to get all the money. You could know all you can know all the financial character. You can know how to uh, break a lease down longhand. <laughs> and that's a super complex mathematical formula, but it's not hard for people who are in the math. I was taught to do it. I know how to do it. I would never shop that way. You see? That's just what it is. You get bids. Stop negotiating. Start getting bids. My book is the only book. I, I think I'm the creator of the system. So there is no, it's like Deshaun, I never heard anybody talking about getting bids before I created it. I created the eight year rule. I'm not teaching. I'm fortunate. Thank you, Lord, that everything that I teach outside of standard like math is stuff that I created. The eight year rule. That's me sitting down and saying, OK, when's the cutoff when a person who purchases starts to win based on depreciation? Eight years. What's the cutoff when a person pays too much for a lease compared to someone who bought and now they're giving the car back? They pay too much, 1.5%. So the bidding system that we use, it's not something I learned. It's something that I created. That's why I say test it. That's what my entire book is. Car shopping for people that hate car shopping. Seven steps to saving time, money, and avoiding dealerships. I don't want you in a dealership for more than 30 minutes. If you use what I'm teaching you, you won't be. So, all right, y'all. We've been on here for an hour and 20 minutes today. Go grab your book if you want it. If not, I'll see you in the next broadcast. For those of you who have the book, 
if you just jumped on here like Deshaun, what book are you talking about? You can go watch the live broadcast. It's on YouTube. Once I wrap it up, you'll see it on YouTube. Go watch the live. You're going to see tons of questions that you would have asked. We answered those. And uh, you can watch it on Facebook or you can watch it on YouTube. But my new digital book is called Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. Everything that I teach in the broadcast is out of that book. It's out of my strategies. It's learning to make people bid for your business, not negotiate. You don't want to negotiate for deal. You can't negotiate for your best deal. That's like you walking in and needing a TV and walking into Walmart and going back and forth. You're better off just staying at home and just going on all the websites that have TVs. When you start seeing that all these dealers are ready to compete for your business and that 80% of them are going to be overpriced, it's going to shock you. Those same dealers you've been buying from for two, three, four decades, your family's been buying from, they're not going to want to compete. Their prices are going to be higher. Sometimes they'll win the bid. But when you start making them bid, you're going to see that the relationship's going to change. That's why we don't have relationships with our car salesmen. You're not going to have a relationship. If you've been used to going to barbecues with your car salesman and all that, I'm sorry to tell you, you're either going to keep overpaying. When you start making them bid, the relationship's going to change a bit. Now, if he's a good, if he's a 20 percenter, he won't mind competing. If you're going to say, look, listen, uh, I understand. Give me a shot. Let me compete. I'm going to beat the rest of the offers. If he's that kind of guy, then that's great. But you're going to find that a lot of people have been used to you giving them your business where they haven't even had to compete. All they had to do is negotiate you down. That's not competing. You get what I'm saying? Negotiating you down isn't, comp oh, you earned my business. No, you earn, they earned your business when they beat all the other people who would want to sell you a car. They beat all their prices. And that's what my book is based out of. So it'll be in your inbox in two minutes. You can download it in my TikTok bio, 75% off for 30 minutes. And uh, you can get it in my Instagram bio. Or uh, I'll post it one more time for you guys on Facebook and uh, YouTube. You can click this link here that says Deshaun's book. And you can start using this stuff. You have it forever right there. It'll be your literally your, your, your tool belt. It'll be it's in your tool belt forever. Buying, leasing, luxury cars, doesn't matter. It's all in there step by step. So I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you to everybody that shared. Thank you to everybody who gave gifts. Thank you to everybody that invited somebody here. We can't do this without y'all. So I'll see you all in the next one.